welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Beautiful Kaylin Revenz, I am so happy you decided to join us in our We Choose to Thrive series. As we start our interview, I would like you to share just a little bit of your past story that's brought you to, to where you are today. All right, I'd love to, Becky. Thank you so very much. So when I was... I started between the ages of five and eight. I, I had a cousin that we would go up and visit family and step with, and he would always ask to have a sleep in the camper. And I was like, okay, whatever, you know. And of course, back in the day, parents were like, sure, that'd be fine, whatever, that'd be just a great thing. And so we did. For every time we would go up and visit family, that's what we would do. And and it was, you know, several times a year we'd go do this. And when I was eight years old, I woke up to him on me and I I didn't know I it freaked me out and yet it was it was scary and I didn't know what was happening and I didn't know how to verbalize it and I think the thing that really bothered me the most is like it kind of felt good but it was like I knew it was wrong and I remember when I and then as I really like woke up and came to because I was like in that in and out of sleep phase when I came to I realized what was happening and I ran into the house and I don't know what time of the night it was, but um, I just remember saying in my eight-year-old way that he pulled my underwear down. That was all mm -hmm. I could say. And, and of course, it was more than that. But um, uh, after that, it was just this strain. And I, I really had a hard time figuring out guys. But then what really was annoying was I became really boy crazy. And I guess it was wanting attention or whatever. But needless to say that that relationship with my cousin has never been the same ever. It's, it's been strained for 45 years. Well, that's, that's a given, especially. Absolutely. Yeah. So how did that color your world as you became, became, came into adulthood? You know, it was really, really challenging because when I got married, I thought everything was fine. Um, and then there were just things that just started to like, I didn't want to have intimacy. I was having some real struggles and it really came to light that this was at my core that I had, because I pushed out of my mind that, that I'd had this abuse. And, and I told my husband and the amazing man that he is, he couldn't understand because he'd never experienced anything like that. And, and here I am just having this really hard time. And it was, it was a challenge. I mean, there were lots of years that I was just like, don't, don't touch me. I don't, I don't. I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. And it was, it was very poor for him, you know, and it was poor for me too, because I was missing out on some beautiful, intimate relationships with my husband that, that I could have had at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really, it colored it quite a bit. And definitely confidence levels were shaken, not feeling really, I guess not feeling really clean would probably be the best way I could phrase it. Yeah, I, I think that there's a certain amount of shame that, that we carry with us when things like this, because we tend to believe it's our own fault. We tend yeah. to, and then it colors everything that we do and even the choices that we make. Yeah. So, Kaylin, where are you now in your healing journey? <sighs> I'll tell you what, I, the best thing that ever happened to me, I'm, I am, <laughs> I'm rocking awesome, I'll tell you that right now. Oh my gosh. Um, and, and I know the pivotal thing that really happened to help bring me to where I'm at today was I, I have a dear friend who had, she had her daughters that had been molested by her father-in-law. And she's like, Kaylin, and she was right next to my side. She's like, Kaylin, you need to go talk to him. You need to confront him. You need to work through this. You need to let him know you know, that this wasn't right, that this is how it was, but you also need to get to a place of forgiveness for him and knowing that he may not apologize to you. And so with her by my side, went in, apologized, or I, you know, told him I forgave him. He made up some lame excuse, never did apologize, and 
I was like, okay, but I now can move on. Forgiveness is something. On. Forgiveness is something we do for ourselves. Always, 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 always. And now I'm at a place where I am a coach. I am a speaker. I'm getting ready to be an author, and I now let women. I help empower women to be their very best. And it's because of the journey that I've gone through that's brought me to this glorious place. Lots of healing, lots of transformation, lots of inner work. Because I know now that I am worthy, I am deserving, oh, and that I'm enough. And I absolutely love being Kaylin Marie Reed. I love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> and with good reason. <laughs> yes. I enjoy your bubbly spirit. Um, so. What resources did you tap into for this healing process? Definitely spiritual resources. Um, that's all. We, that would probably be my very first. Lots of um, lots of study, lots of prayer, lots of meditation. But then I also um, started looking into different programs that would help me to um, speak my message and be able to get things out there. And so one program that that really helped. Um, take me to I feel like the next level because you know there was the secret that was out there about tapping mm -hmm. into various things right. that was very pivotal and then there was a, a program that I became certified as a certified coach in called eight to great the powerful process for positive change and and then from there I was led to so many other different types of programs and things that just kept feeding what what it is that I was in the middle of creating with my own program and so all of these different things and these different people that have been brought into my life have allowed me the opportunity of being able to um, to have this transformation this healing that has just been phenomenal but the other thing is too is the support system of my husband my family my friends and and that has been Oh, the amazing so people that you surround yourself with. Yeah, I've needed it. Mm -hmm. And and they, they all need it. Yeah, and they have fed my soul. And I know that in a way I have fed them as well. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. so what would you say to a woman, both even a man, that is, that is starting out on this journey? They're suddenly, they're finally getting tired of that heavy weight of the the pain that we all understand and know and lived if they're ready to say all right I'm done I don't want to live this way anymore what would your words of advice be to them listen to what their heart is saying absolutely pay attention because your heart is speaking truth not the head don't listen to what your head is saying go in be silent be still meditate Focus on what is really emerging from the innermost parts of your heart and let that flow through because that's where you're going to find the answers that you're looking for and the direction that you need to go. And if you feel a prompting, and even if it's just a little tiny thing that says, do you know what, maybe I should take a painting class or maybe I should go talk to this person or maybe I should read this book or maybe I should go to this event or maybe I should watch this movie that may have a message for me. Maybe I should go out in nature and take a walk. Maybe I should do whatever these things are. Do it. Don't even second guess it. Just do it. Because what's going to happen is, is God and the heavens and the universe, they're conspiring to help get you on this journey of healing. And when we take just that one little step of action, it will lead us to more and more and more and more. And those doors will keep opening and the healing will keep taking place. And, and you will be blown away and there will be a point where you won't even realize that you're the same person because this transformation has, has happened and it has just become the most beautiful gift you've given yourself. That is follow. so beautiful. Yeah, follow it. Follow, follow that prompting. Follow. So yeah. is there any one particular book that you read that you can think of right off? I know this is kind of throwing yeah. something at you, but um, that you can think of that made a difference for you. Unlocking the Powers of Faith by Garth Allred. Unlocking the Powers of Faith by Garth Allred. Because see, what happened is I went into depression, anxiety, a whole bunch of other crud. Um, and there was another book, Drawing, up, Drawing Upon the Powers of Heaven. And then the, the sequel to that was um, Seeing Into the Mind's Eye or something like that by a gentleman, uh, Grant Von Harrison was his name. 
And those are just two little baby books. But I'm telling you what, powerful. Because it all plays into um, things that are so much greater than us and that we are all a part of this big, beautiful, gorgeous plan of, of life and of giving and of love and of manifestations and of miracles happening in our lives. Just really beautiful. You are totally awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Right back at you, girlfriend. <laughs> thank you. And, and thank you for choosing to, to, to participate in our We Choose to Thrive series, which is releasing very soon. I'm I know. A second. So excited. <laughs> and you have a chapter in it. And I so thank you for the, for the support and this, um, just being who you are. Thank you. And thank you so much for asking me to do this because I have to say it's uh, – you know, I've always, this, this year my theme has been to um, speak my truth, and uh, yep, I'm doing it. We're speak doing my it. <laughs> my truth is something to make things happen and really be powerful and standing in my power, and uh, I'm really grateful for this opportunity, so thank you for being prompted to invite me. I really am grateful. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting. Can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world? We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.